Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I am your host and guide, Zolan Iron Shield, aka Garrett. And today I am privileged and honored to welcome on our very first guest on the channel famous composer Chance Thomas, who's done the music for the Lord of the Rings Online MMO, which you're hearing right now in the background, as well as so many other video game scores. It is fantastic and it is an honor to have him on. He does come to us from his mountain abode internet, so there's a little bit of blur in the video, so I put a small picture of him in the corner there so you can see a nice clear picture, but the audio is fantastic. I also have links to his new book that'll be coming out this summer, as well as some new music score that he just did, who he gave us wonderful sneak peeks on uh, during the interview. So I have that link there as well. And to his YouTube channel, and also to his Huge Sound Records, where you can check out his music and buy it for yourself if you wanna check it out. And also I will have topic timestamps where you can see what subject we're on and what we're talking about at what time. There's wonderful stories sprinkled all out through the entire interview. And it was a blast and honor to have him on again. And don't forget guys to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this and also go and like and subscribe to his channel. But with no further ado, enjoy the interview, my friends. Hello and welcome back to another interview on Voice of the Rings. I'm your host and guide, Zolan Iron Shield, or Garrett, and we have a wonderful and fantastic guest today. I'm very pleased to introduce composer Chance Thomas to the channel here on uh, Voice of the Rings. This is really, really cool to have him on. Uh, Chance Thomas has been a composer for many years. He's done Lord of the Rings Tolkien content since like 1998 for different music. He is a fantastic composer. Let me just run over just a few things he has done. I'll pop them there up at the bottom of the screen. He's done James Cameron's Avatar, Peter Jackson's King Kong, Warhammer Chaos Bane, Quest for Gl Glory 5 Dragonfire, Dota 2, The Lord of the Rings Online, which is one of the reasons I'm sure most of our viewers are here for, and a lot more things too. So anyway, very, very honored and a privilege to have you on Chance and welcome. Would you like to say a little bit more and tell us about yourself a little bit? <laughs> Well, first of all, what a fantastic introduction, man. I sound <laughs> like a guy who's actually done some stuff. <laughs> you make me sound good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, oh, I've always... Gosh, you know... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I've always loved your music since I was about 10 years old. So it was quite an honor when you came and we had a... a an in-person interview many years ago at my university. So that was pretty cool. So right. I appreciate you coming back a few years later for the channel. <laughs> That was at the University of California Channel Islands. Yes, yes, yes. It was it was a lot of fun. So when I was going there, I, I really enjoyed that. So, but we're gonna have a blast you know, today. Yeah, dude, it, it's funny because you mentioned that you've been enjoying the music I composed since you were ten. Ten years old was when I first started writing music. <laughs> That's right? really cool. That's Those so years cool. ago. Um, yeah, it's just... music has been a part of my life from the very beginning. My mom was a concert violinist and an opera singer. Um, I tried to play violin first. That was my first instrument. Mm -hmm. Forget mm -hmm. it. That <laughs> instrument, how does anybody make actual music out of that screechy it's, little box? I couldn't do it. It's impressive. Um, but then I learned to play piano and I learned to play drums and I played the cello and picked up a little guitar. Um, music's just always been a part of my life. Yeah, that is that is so cool. Well, okay, so for you are actually our official first interview on the channel. I wanted to, you know, oh. keep it for someone special, one of my friends. So I I feel honored to be able to call you a friend, Chance. So I appreciate that. Thank um, you. And I'm I'm likewise honored. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, so today, what we're gonna do first is I would like to go through a couple that these will be questions I'll ask, ask everyone on uh, that come on for an interview. Yeah. So they're gonna be Lord of the Rings. These are gonna be kind of fast ones. And then I have a bunch that are more catered towards you as a composer yeah, cool. and, and stuff. And I have a bunch of from subscribers and my Patreons and a couple of my family members and cousins. So they helped make a bunch. So anyway, and we got some for you too that you sent me, I, I'm, they're in here too. So we'll go through everything. If you want real quick, right off the bat, before I forget, did you wanna tell us about that new thing you were working on? Ah, so there's two things. Yes. So on February 20th, 
Um, my last and final music score of my entire career, because I recently retired, the last music score of my entire career is coming out, and it's for a Ubisoft game called The Settlers New Allies. Ooh. And some of you guys might remember The Settlers from, I don't know, the past 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's got a lot of great history with it, but we've reimagined it um, musically, building the entire score around fingerstyle guitar, acoustic guitar. <sighs> oh, man. Plus, you know orchestra and um some folk instruments it sounds amazing oh, that's so exciting um, that's coming out on february 20th all right and the other thing that we're working on garrett is my memoirs um yeah routledge press books has contracted with me to write basically the story of my career oh, the book is called so making cool. it huge in video games because yeah. the name of my company was Huge Sound. Yes. So I'm excited for that. That'll be coming out this summer. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, well, we'll, and we'll definitely we'll talk about a little more at the end, too, of the video here. And Great. for everyone, just Great. so they know ahead, for people here at the beginning, I will have links down there to Chance Thomas's uh, new book, to his site, hugesoundrecords.com, right? I think that's the internet yeah. site, right? And that I'll also have to your YouTube channel. So I'll have that all linked in there, Perfect. whatever else. So uh, we're all set there. And... um. Yeah, anyway, that's really exciting. For me, personally, as a musician myself and a music major, right. I'm, I'm really excited to read those. So, um, all right, let's get straight into some Lord of the Rings questions. All right, so these will be a couple minutes. All right, here we go. Question one, how were you first introduced to Tolkien's world? Was it through books, movies, games, from a person you knew? So I was first introduced to Tolkien's world by um, my boss at Sierra Online. Oh, and I was okay. working for them many years ago, who sent a game designer to my office with these four, <laughs> um, plus the Silmarillion. So there are actually five paperbacks. Yeah. I went through and I read them and I found everything that had anything to do with music or sound or songs. And I put these ridiculous yellow stick notes in it so I could find my way around them easily. Yeah. But um, yeah. The books, that was how I first discovered Tolkien's world. And it was from the perspective of learning about music in uh, in his world. Yeah. And I, yeah. And you you think you told me before that you love how he wrote music, right? Like, and I maybe will save that for the next coming up question because I have okay. one that you might want to talk about that one. Um, okay, cool. So, okay, question. We'll get through these fun ones. That's a real, great answer. Great answer. But uh, uh, all right. So question two. Um all right, I got a little thing here for people to see on the screen. Perfect, there we go. Who are your top three favorite characters from Tolkien's works? This can include He's... expanded universe, if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Gandalf, Aragorn, and Gimli. Nice, oh, that's great answers. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, Gimli is one of mine, uh, you, you probably guess. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is, that's a great answer. All right, question three. All right, let me just make sure I'm moving later on here. What are your favorite top three locations in Ardar or Middle-earth? Anywhere on the planet. Um, the Shire, uh, Rivendell, and Lothlorien. Great answers. All right, perfect. Nice. All right. You're good at this. <laughs> All right. Four. Um, uh, well, let's see here. What did I just do to my questions? Oh, well. Let's just go to the next question here. Four. What race would you be in Middle Earth? A hobbit, an elf, an elf, a dwarf, a human. Okay, an elf. All right. All right. And I, because they're, they, they've got this whole spiritual thing going on that I like and I relate to personally. Yeah. And they're also the most musical. And you could make the argument for the hobbits, right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But the elven music is a little more polished, a little more classical uh, flavored. And, and that appeals to me, I think, a little bit more. So definitely yeah. an elf. Plus, I like to shoot the bow and arrow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, you know what? I put I made all these questions, but it's going out of order down there. So I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Well, let's just talk them out. All right. Question number five. That's a great answer, Elf. All right. Five. Which of the three Lord of the Rings films is your favorite one? Um, and which of the three Hobbits is your favorite one? Answer for both separately okay. out of the three films. So my favorite of the three Lord of the Rings movies would have to be Fellowship of the Ring, um, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. I'm sorry, how can you choose one from three yeah. masterpieces? It's Ex not possible. 
Exactly. I I actually agree with that answer. It was a good answer. It's a trick question. <laughs> yeah. Look, there are favorite moments in each of them. Yes. For sure. Uh, taken together, I, I just sort of put them all together as one really, really long movie. It, it really and is. That would it's be one my story. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Especially extended editions. <laughs> for The Hobbits... Um, Hobbit movies probably Battle of the Five Armies. You yeah you see so yeah okay all right that's a good one yeah um definitely definitely good good answers and by the way so people don't comment uh, Chance Thomas pointed this out to me before the interview but he's up on he lives up near a really high mountain right so that's why our connection's a little bit choppy occasionally but your sound's pretty right. good so we're 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 fine all right okay. just a little side note for everybody chapter six other I'll get twenty. Tech, you know, comments. What, what's happening? <laughs> uh, six. What is your favorite scene in the movie adaptations of The Lord of the Rings and then again of The Hobbit? Mm. It's kind of a follow up question. Okay, so Moria. Oh, yeah. From the time that um, the goblins come up and uh, they have the big fight inside um, Durin's uh, tomb. Ugh. And then they run, and they all, all those goblins are coming down like spiders. Oh, And then so the good. Balrog makes its entrance with that scraping noise, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it ch and they're jumping down those those um, those stairs, and you've got the the Maori choir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Howard oh. Short's score is oh, it's just oh my god. And then gosh. of course when the Balrog stands up, right? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then of course, oh. all leading to the climactic moment. Who shall not pass? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, that cinematic brilliance. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, man, I, I hundred percent agree. If someone's gonna ask me, that would be my favorite scene too in the Lord of the Rings. It's I just so love good. Moria. It's so cool. Yeah, well, great answer. Great answer. All right, here we go. Answer, uh, so here's a little bit harder. This is a little harder one now. Okay, this is number seven. Yeah. What's your favorite Tolkien book? And I know, again, that's kind of like, hmm, you know, pick a favorite child kind of thing. It's not really very easy, but is that the Fellowship? Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a good pick. Of the, of the three books. So I much building in it. Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great one. Yep, yep. Um, and then, uh, what's your favorite chapter in the Tolkien's book? So, in Fellowship of the Ring, let's say. Mm. Um, probably Journey in the Dark. Mm. Okay. Moria chapter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, just I know so it's. Well written. Yeah, yeah. He just Tolkien was a master with that stuff. It's crazy. It's so good. All right, that's a great answer. All right, so number nine, what is the best thing you learned from Tolkien in his works? Anything could be any kind of thing. Oh, Philosophy I've got a lesson. Few. Yeah, well, do it. Yeah. Give us a quick summary one of what what you think. Um, you can do all of them if you want. <laughs> the the first thing that sort of comes to mind is his research that he brought to bear. You know, figuring out all the things about linguistics, figuring out mm -hmm. all the things about world building, um, nature, uh, armies, cultures. He didn't take this on lightly. Right? He delved very deeply to be able mm -hmm. to write these books. And so if I have to keep my answer short, um, that's what I'm going to focus on. Of course, there's a dozen other things but for the short answers we'll give you that all right how's yeah, that Garrett? perfect perfect yeah i know i that's a hard i'm giving you these are these could be really deep right the real fast ones but don't worry we'll go into more deep stuff in a minute okay, um cool. uh so 10 for the well, here we go last one um what's your best memory or story of anything tolkien rated in your life and for examples a moment with your family friends watching the movies together reading books playing video games any, or anything else that kind of all right, we're not going to be particularly short on this one. <laughs> you don't have to be. I have I... Yeah, go have for a it. a couple. Go for it. Yeah. So the first one is going to be when I decided um, when I was writing, and this is before I even got involved with Lord of the Rings Online, um, I was serving as the franchise music director for all the Tolkien games underneath Universal Studios 
um, game studio. And so I was writing five different thematic suites, one for each race in Middle Earth or the key races in Middle Earth. Oh, wow. And it was time to write music for the dwarves. Oh. And I was sitting in my studio, you know, at the keyboard here, sort of noodling around. I couldn't come up with anything. I thought, I need to go outside in nature and think about this. And there was a river um, close to where my studio was. And I went, and I remember walking by the river, trying out different ideas in my mind for this theme for the dwarves. And finally, it, it, it kind of came to me as I was walking along. Da 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 and it's like that's it that sounds like dwarves to me yeah so that's part one but the other part was when we got to the recording studio i'd recorded the dwarves theme with the orchestra but we didn't have the the choir on it yet and i had booked all these men from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> oh, like, you know, they were these good. Guys, oh, they were the such great singers. Yeah. But as they sang that, it was a little bit too um, perfect, right? La, 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 la. It, was, it, it didn't sound right. It didn't sound like a bunch of miners that are just humming yes. along to each other. Yeah. Right. And so I finally, I said, look, guys, here's what I want you to do. I tried all these different things. I said, I want you to try marching in place as you sing this. They started marching in place and suddenly it was no longer just singing. Suddenly it felt like you know, centuries of dwarves down in the deep places of the earth with their hammers and their axes digging for mithril. Yeah. And, and suddenly it came to life. And I can remember conducting that session and just Oh, it just all of the Tolkien lore that I loved. It was that's, like it left the life in that moment. Just so like that's a, a dream. Great, yeah, that's a great Tolkien related memory for me. That's fantastic. Oh, man, that's so cool, man. That's inspiring. That's really, really cool, man. I wish I was wish I would have been there. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's oh, so you would have cool. dug it. Yeah. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a music person. I mean, mm -hmm. if you would have been standing there with me, you probably would have been going through some of the thoughts I did. It's like, well, they sound good, but they don't sound like dwarves. Yeah. How can we get them to sound like dwarves? And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, it. and now it's amazing. I hum that song all the time, you know, since I've, I, because I've, I've listened to it so long it's from for so ch small <laughs> child that it's like, well, you know, high school, a pre-high school, but it's just like. I love that song. Do, 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 do. I just Dude. love that song. It's just, it's one of my favorites, actually. So it's really, really cool. Again, That's personally, cool. I I put your music on par with like Howard Shore and all the rest. Like, I love Howard Shore's music, but I love your stuff just as much. You know what I mean? Because I was listening to yours at the same time and it has that same quality and we'll get into that more in a second so that was all my fast okay. questions so now i have some direct okay. questions at you and we can go through and have fun with this all right so uh this will be the main main portion of our interview here all right so you already kind of answered this question but who helped support or influence you in a positive way to start doing a music career in your life or told oh yeah that was definitely my mom um her obviously listening to her play the violin around the house, listening to her sing uh, was inspiring. But also she bought me um, for my seventh birthday, I think. She bought me this vinyl album of music from the great masters. There was Mozart, there was Tchaikovsky, there was Beethoven, there was Bach, and a little colored booklet, right? Which I could read yeah. a little bit about the composers and this little record player, which I set up in my room. And I can remember even now, I had a little red braided rug on the floor in my room. And I can remember sitting Indian style, you know, looking at the little booklet and reading about the composers as I listened to their music. And it was a wonderful way, I think, as a young child to be exposed to the power and beauty of music. That is so cool. And I, you maybe you remember, but I remember when we were talking last time that like, it's a very similar story. My mom has been always a supporter of me, and that's really why I got into music, because she's it means so much, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It really matters. It really matters. Yeah. So it's really cool to have a really good parent, isn't it? It's really neat. So. Now, was your mom? Remind me. Did your mom play an instrument? 
Um, she sung a lot in college. She's a really good singer. Uh, I lost her. Oh, there you're back. Okay. She was, um, she, uh, did a lot of singing. She played a lot of guitar when she was in high school. Um, but, uh, so she did that for many guitar? years. Yeah. Yeah. She played some guitar and then, um, she used to sing to me all the time when I was little. In fact, there's one song, my little sunshine, my little sunshine, da, 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 that song, right? Um, yeah. that one, if I still hear that. Like, I just get this crazy emotional feelings. And because I was a baby right. when she's, it's really crazy. It's like, it's like, that's my mom, right? It's like, whoa, you know, it's weird how emotions can go back to you like that. But anyway, enough about me. This is about you. Um, no, so no. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ask one more thing. Oh, yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Out. Yeah. I mean, you, you and me both. We have this this connection to music. It's like what mm. you were saying about yep. you are my sunshine, or or going back to the dwarves theme. You know, music connects with you, and it connects not just to your mind but to your heart and stirs yeah. you up. I think that's a beautiful thing. That's probably why you were drawn to music. Well said, well said. Yeah, it's like it's something deeper than other you know other things, right? It's almost it's a love, yeah. you know, just like with another what you know your spouse or whatever. It's just like it's something deeper than just everyday things, right? <laughs> It really is. It's yeah. a blessing. Music is a blessing. Um, like there's a spiritual component to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. Definitely. It's like the, like, it feels like a connection to God, right? Like it's just something there. Oh. Right. So anyway, oh. it's pretty cool. Um, two. So, uh, have you played Lotra much? It's a quick question. And there's a part, second part yeah. of this. You have, you have. Yeah. So, um, when I was first brought on as the music director, um, over all the different Lord of the Rings games. Lotro was just getting started. It wasn't called Lotro at the time. It was called Middle Earth Online. Oh, and, I remember. Um, okay, yep. Right? And yeah. as the music director, I went in and I started playing the game, trying to learn the different uh, regions and, and how they had approached it. And then I started writing music for the yeah. game. And then it became Lotro. Um, and then, like, for Shadows of Angmar, that was the first thing that I wrote music for. And I would go through and I would play the different sections. I'd put music in and then we'd test it, right? And it, yeah. they, they would do the new version and send it back and I would go through and I would play it. Um, That's so cool. And so that was when I played the game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I have a follow-up question about that in a minute. But the second part of that that question is, uh, how were you brought on to the music for the game and other games I'd like? Um, and have you composed other Tolkien music scores in the past? So, like, what other games were you talking about besides, like, Lotro or Middle-Earth yeah, at that time? So, when I first I first got involved with um, a Lord of the Rings-related game in 1998, that's when Craig Alexander, who was the general manager of Sierra Online at the time, okay. went out and obtained a license from Tolkien Enterprises be able to create the world's first MMO based on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, yeah. literary works. And so we started developing that game, and that was when I very first started to write music um, based on Lord of the Rings. Now, that game got canceled, uh, sadly. Yeah, you're right. um, okay. But, right? but then, and, and the license kind of bounced around. It went from Sierra to, I think, Havas International, and then Universal picked it up. Mm -hmm. Then Vivendi uh, merged <laughs> with Universal, and so it was Vivendi Universal. And then um, who was it? Uh, Turbine. Turbine, right. yeah. So, I mean, it was like crazy. And now it's Standing it. Stones. <laughs> yeah, now but, it's yeah. Standing. I mean, and it went through yeah. Warner Brothers. And, um, but as the guy who first started writing music, Based on the Tolkien MMO in 1998, I ran around trying to follow that license wherever it would go because I thought, I love this world and I want to write music based on it. So eventually I did pitch myself to become hired to become the music director for Universal Studios. Right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It was a big accomplishment. Yeah. So I did music for the Fellowship of the Ring, the first trailer that they did, and then I oversaw their composers as they worked on that very first black label games fellowship of the ring game oh, then i started okay. writing music i told you earlier in the interview i wrote five different thematic suites oh. for the hobbits for the elves for the dwarves for the race of men and for the races of evil and inside each of those thematic suites 
were mm-hmm. several different main themes that mm-hmm. all these composers then took and implemented in their own writing. Oh, um, wow. So, like The War of the Ring. Do you remember that game? Yes. Um, yeah. That was by Liquid Entertainment. And then the very first Hobbit game, the platformer, oh. by Surreal Software. Okay. Um, I think it was Surreal. I'm going to have to go. And I'm going to my channel. We're going to have to go figure, find these and look at them now. Yeah, later. yeah. Yeah. And then there were a couple more that we started working on. One of them was called Treason of Isengard. The other okay. one was called Shadows of Mordor. And both of those games got canceled and, yeah. and were never made. Oh, interesting. It was called Shadows of Mordor. And then there's that other game now that's called Shadows of Mordor. Yeah. Like what? Like right. that 20 years later, right? Yeah, by Warner interesting. Brothers. Interesting. So they use their same title kind of thing. Interesting. Wow. I think great. So. I mean, great. it's a it's a great title. Shadows of Mordor. Come on. Yeah. That's a great title. Yeah. It's Can't yeah. Let that go to wait. That's pretty cool though to find out there was a previous one, right? That they were like being worked on in the past. That's really cool. Wow. All right. Awesome. Awesome. That's so cool. I'm thoroughly enjoying with <laughs> enjoying listening. Um, I better continue our qu- questions here though. So third qu- question three for you or topic I should say. Three. Um, I'd uh. This is the one that I really, I remember you telling me this in person a few years ago. I'd love to hear the story again about the way you got the timing on the Rivendell piece for Lotro, where you come up over the edge of the valley at the moment the music hits its climax. And that also has something to do with birds. Just a little. Yeah. So you gotta tell us about that. If any of your listeners have uh, bought the Lord of the Rings Online 10th anniversary commemorative soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Which you can get on your site. There is one track on there um, called Rivendell. And as you listen to it, you'll hear how we timed things out. Because it begins, um, you hear the sound of of being in a forest. And you can hear the birds in the background, right? And then there's a solo flute that comes in and introduces the primary theme of Rivendell. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. And he kind of fades away, right? And then he comes back and um, does a little bit of a, of a variation on it. And this goes on, and I can't remember the exact timing. It, it, was it like um, 48 seconds? Yeah, something seconds? about that. I just watched it yesterday to kind of refresh. Yeah, because the, okay. the piece is like a minute and like it's over. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's about 40 seconds-ish, something in there. They would start it, you know, when you were close enough. Right when you pass the border. Yeah, yeah. right when you cross the Baruna, the Fords of Baruna, and then you go up the hill and you pass a border and it says you've entered Rivendell, but you don't see Rivendell yet because it's just a valley with trees. When you come over the ridge, right, Mm -hmm. and see it, then we play the full orchestral version. You know, yeah, da, 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 oh my gosh! I remember first time yeah, I was, it was when I was like 13 years old playing the game. When I did that and saw, I just remember being like, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> awestruck. I was like, oh my gosh, it's Rivendell. <laughs> so Garrett, the other thing is there was another thing that we did something like that with too. It was Ooh. one of the dwarven worlds. It might have been Arid Luin. Um, uh, oh, okay. Where you, you, it's a similar type of thing. It's the moon rising up over the entrance to Eridluene, and that's when we then start to play the, the first part oh. of the dwarves theme. And that was also pretty impactful. That's cool. So wait, it's, so it's time to like the sun and moon in the game going up and down. Is that what you're saying? I know it was time to the moon. To the moon. So when the moon comes the up moon. over the thing, it, oh, yeah. that's cool. I might have to, okay, we're well, going to have to go check to see if it's still. Yeah, or maybe I just got lucky uh, and, and and showed up there, but I've heard other people talk about it. So I think it was a thing that the team implemented on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they were probably like, oh, look how good this works, right? <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and can we, can we do this too? Can we take a minute to call out um, and give a shout out the people like Steven De Gregorio, um, who worked in house at Turbine in the audio department for years and years, and and Steven actually wrote a ton of the music, in the game. Oh, and that's he, cool. I think I think Steven loved Tolkien's music as much as I did. That's cool. And, you know, he was the guy who was doing a lot of those timing. 
things and figure out place. But this little music segment and mm-hmm. the guys who worked with him, I just think we need to shout out to those guys. Cause they absolutely. Did a fantastic job. Absolutely. If I mean, and I'm, my channel is growing. I'm not, you know, we're getting bigger. We're not huge yet, but we're a lot bigger than we were a year ago. Uh, you know, if any of them ever would like to come on for an interview, you can let them know if you want to help. I'd be happy to give them, you know, time on the air, on the channel. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Sure. But, again, I really appreciate you coming on, Chance. This is so much fun. I'm, I'm having a blast. I hope everyone else is, too. <laughs> and, again, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. And also go and like and subscribe to Chance's YouTube channel, too, and check out his site down there. All right, uh, let's do. That was a great, great answer. That's really cool. It's really cool to know about the dwarf thing too. I didn't know that, so that's pretty exciting. Now I'm curious to go watch the moon. And I think it's the entrance <laughs> to Arid Lewis. And the entrance. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Five. The topic five. What was your favorite Tolkien song you ever wrote? I know this is like choosing a child. It's not, and uh, what was your like favorite score overall? Like a couple, you know, a couple okay. pieces. Like you Question. said, two two questions. It's like what's like your, you know, you can even do your top three if you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, my favorite song I ever wrote. Tom Tom Avidil? is that or, yeah. Party in the Shire. Party in the Shire, yeah. Oh, it's my ringtone. That's amazing. Okay, and that one is actually one of my favorites. You can use that as an in-game sound for your in-game house. So I actually, when you're in your house, I have that on the wall, and that will, there's first the silent theme, the silent Shire theme, and then they they drop that in like a minute later. And I I remember being in my room when I was younger in high school, and I just turned that on. I'd just be like dancing while I'm doing work or chores. or. (laughs) And when we recorded that, you know, I remember the violinist. I can still remember having her in the studio. And, you know, she was kind of <laughs> held her violin low, you know, like the Celtic fiddle players. Yeah. Do, and she's kind of moving around a little bit. And the microphone is here and she's playing. It was, just, uh, it was a great, great memories from um, recording sessions. That is song. so cool. That is so cool. Well, I hope you know that you guys brought a lot of people joy to your song and everyone who worked on it. So because like. It's, I, I can vouch for most of the Tolkien community and or the and Lotro obviously the Lotro community that we love that music. <laughs> we really love that music and it, yeah. And so. Tom Bombadil would be right up there too. You yeah, know, that's Tom Bombadil. Depends on the day which one I like the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you feel like? Do you want to do jig or do you want to do more of a oh jolly Tom? You know. <laughs> All right, and then uh. So let's go and do the sixth topic. That's a great answer. I love it. Um, what does your, um, this one's a little bit more of a composer question. All right. This is for people. This is more from my orchestra that I'm in. I asked them a few questions, what they'd like to ask you too. Um, what, uh, what does your work entail in your career, right? Um, for movies and video games and, and other things you've done. Like, let me, let me define that a little bit better. Um, what what do you have to do? What was a daily work look like for you, besides going into the studio? Um, for like the technical stuff, like writing or using edit, you know music software, that kind of thing. All right, let's start with assuming that I actually have a project. Yeah, score to do because when you don't have a score to work on of your time is consumed by finding work <laughs> that's yep that as any sense. working mu- musician will attest mm-hmm. um, but once you had the contract like once i had a contract with um Lord of the rings online so let's say that i'm working on the writers of rohan score right mm-hmm. um, my typical day i would come in early in the morning into the studio and i had every wall in my studio was covered with screenshots from the writers of Rohan expansion. And I would literally walk around and I would, you know, just pick a, a, a couple of images and I'd just stare at them and I'd soak them up and I'd imagine what would it be like to live in that world? And, you know, <clears throat> are they tired? You know, what was it like sleeping on the ground? And is their bottom sore from running around on these four? I mean, who knows, right? Just crazy, whatever came into my mind. I'm trying to understand those people and that time frame and mm-hmm. that world, what would it be like to 
feel like Saruman has turned against you. And as I would think about those things, I would get feelings, right? I would start to feel emotions, um, nobility, tragedy, sadness, determination, grit, you know, all these kinds of emotions that I thought were associated with those people in that place at that time. As I started to feel those emotions, then musical ideas and gestures would begin to present themselves to my mind. Just like I did with the uh, Song of the Dwarves, mm -hmm. I would play around with those ideas in my mind. I'd shift them, I'd turn this note that way, I'd turn this phrase the other way. And when I finally felt like I had a good idea in my mind about music that reflected what I was feeling about those people, then I would finally go to the keyboard. Right? I'd turn over to the keyboard, I'd bring up my computer that had my writing software in it, and I would start to play in the different parts that I was hearing in my head. Of course, it's not always, you know, a hundred percent translation. Yeah. You get a few ideas yeah. down, and then you'll start. Those will suggest other things, and then you'll start building your orchestration. And um, that's a great way to describe it you, to everyone. Yeah. Since okay. I did theory, then, I know yeah. what you're talking about. But yeah, sorry, <laughs> keep going. Right. And then once you had the, once I had the song or the the track that that I was working on pretty much intact electronically, then I have to convert that to sheet music that the musicians can play. Um, there's also a part of the process where I record all of the digital versions of the instruments into oh. a, a program called Pro Tools, which is what we record into. Ah. And we would take that into the big studio with the orchestra and the choir. They would play it. They would record it. I'd bring it back to my studio to edit it. Then I'd take it out to another studio ah. to do the final mix. Then I'd bring it back to my studio convert the file types and send it off to Lotro. Wow. And that was at the process we went through in a nutshell. Wow. That was, that was, an imp that was impressive that you put that into like two minutes. That was really well done. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, that's really cool. And I was going to ask what program you said, pro tools. I, that's what I used at channel islands. So like when yeah, I was learning, pro so tools is great. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. That's, that's really awesome. Did you ever have times where you used pro tools and then you heard a certain piece with a real instrument and were like, Mm, I'm gonna slightly change that. Did you ever have that? Like versus? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, like a recording, like you hear it with the in, the recorded instrument, the electronically recorded instrument, a certain way, and then you hear someone play it, and you're like, I don't quite like how that, you know, how it the, how that the translates. Quality. Yeah, yeah. You know, Garrett, early in my career, that did happen sometimes because I yeah. would work things out with the digital version of the instrument, and I yeah. think, oh, this is gonna sound so great, but then you get the real instrument in. And it maybe would speak a little bit differently. Yeah. Or it would sound thin in that part of the register or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And so over time, as I as I spent more as I had more experience with real instruments, I began to know more about what their character was and so I could write to that character just because I had, then you, I, I you had just more knew. experience with it. Mm, yeah. That makes that makes total sense. Great. That's awesome. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Added a question and a question there. <laughs> All right. So and then <laughs> All right, so um, I'm curious now. Now you could expand this on any of your career or work, so it doesn't have to just be your Lord of the Rings stuff. Um, so who did you work with in your career? Notable, you already said you're awesome people who helped you do the music editing, but um, also I was curious: did you ever work directly with Peter Jackson for his King Kong movie? So the only thing that I knew, Peter Jackson never talked to me directly. Yeah, okay. There was an article. There was an article that came out in Business Week about the King Kong score, and it said that he personally listened to and approved all of the that's, tracks. That's that's so, cool. Yeah, I didn't know. So that. you got a I big A plus. I, just, <laughs> I thought I was just being judged by the guys on the game team, but apparently there was another step <laughs> up here. And, um, that's really that's cool. That's what the article said. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. So, and would you like from a back then when you were first starting more and things, if you knew it was higher ups that were going to see it, do you think you would have tried harder on certain things or you would have done exactly the same? Oh, I'm curious. Are you kidding? No, I, I did Peter Jackson's King Kong. I thought that was the, the, the biggest thing I was ever going to do in my life. Right? It was a bad, it, it was, was like, a big movie. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah. I'm working on King Kong. And, you know, at the, you, we look back now and it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I know. Just finished the three Lord of the Rings movies. Peter Jackson was like God of Hollywood. <laughs> so to be. Wins all the Grammys, doing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So to be doing the video game based on King Kong, I, I thought I'd arrived. So I poured everything to that and and that's kind of my approach anyway garrett any pro yeah. any project i do i sort of put everything i have into it yeah yeah definitely definitely that's that's pretty cool so then i, I on elaborate a little <laughs> more on the what did you do then for the Jim cameron's avatar now did you do that you did the music for all of that right was that video the game the video game okay okay that's pretty cool yeah and that game Which was, was awesome world was the world's first 3d video game which was pretty amazing yeah it makes sense when they did the movie and then they did the video game right so yeah right yeah um he's 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 just a, such an innovator um we did i think there were over four hours of music tracks in that video game score it's cool um i'll tell you the the james horner story real quick oh yeah yeah go for it absolutely yeah oh. Some of your listeners may may know the name James Horner. He was um, the most beloved film score composers in Hollywood. Um, sadly, he passed away a few years ago uh, mm. from an airplane accident. Oh. But he was the composer that James Cameron chose to do his film score. And I wanted desperately to connect so that there was uh, more of a union between the film score and the video game score for avatar because mm -hmm. on king kong there wasn't oh, my okay. entire video game score for king kong was finished or james newton howard even started on the film score. on the movie okay yeah so i wanted to try to make that connection uh with with the film score and eventually they made it happen and I remember they set up this meeting for myself and the music director at Ubisoft. Um, and it, it was somewhere out in um, Eastern Malibu. <laughs> I remember we were driving past all there. these big ranch ranch yeah. houses. Yeah. And we, we, we found the right address and we went down this long winding driveway and came to this guard house. I mean, literally, like you see in the movies, I, there's this big gate. That place is crazy. House. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy comes out, you know, with his with his shades on, and he's like, "Who are you? And why are you here?" And you know, he's he's packing. You can see yeah. his gun in his pocket. And so we're like, we told him who we were, and he he let us in. We get out of the car, and this guy comes out to greet us, and it's Simon. Um, oh, is it? I can't remember his last name now, but he was uh, Horner's um, recording engineer and mixing engineer. Okay. He came out and he was cool and he's this British guy and he invites us in and we walk in the house. Over here is the dining room. Yeah. There's no dining room table, Garrett. There's a nine foot grand piano. Oh my God. Sitting in the dining room with Neumann mics hanging all around it. <laughs> that guard was, was there like, just for that. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you got to be kidding me. And um, oh anyway, gosh. so he's showing us around and we go up the stairs to the composing room. And I, I told Simon, I said, God, I love Horner's house. This is so cool. Yeah. And he stops. He says, you think this is his house? <laughs> oh, this is just the place they rented for him to write the score. Oh, my gosh. And I thought, OK, I've seen it all. <laughs> That's the difference between composing for a blockbuster movie and composing for a triple A video game. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There there's a world of difference. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It was amazing. Though I'd argue uh, some would, of your music is better, but that's, you know, that's me. <laughs> you're, very gen you're very generous. Um, but Horner was such a, a sweet, kind, engaging man. That's awesome. Um, he treated us as equals. Um, I, I can't say enough positive about the man. That's super cool. That's super cool. Well, that's a really cool story, though. I love. Gosh, nine foot piano. That I don't think I've ever seen one in person. Like, oh, there, it was beautiful. That's beautiful. crazy. Wow. Funny. That's some of these stories I'm telling um, are actually in in the memoir that we talked about at the oh, beginning, sweet. the book that I'm writing. 
Well, all the more reason people should check out the book, right? I'm going I'm gonna get it. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> the eighth one is uh um orchestra music is this this is a this will lead very nicely from what you just talked about. Orchestra music <laughs> is this is from my cousin. My cousin Nathan gave us this question. Orchestra music is loved by younger generations due to the games and movies. Do you believe the highest medium of composing resides in movies and video games today? Uh, I don't know if I'd use the word highest medium. Okay. Yeah. Well, what would you, what music, would you use? You can, you're welcome to change it however you want. Music is music. Um, that, yeah, that's di- true. Different, different styles speak to different people in different ways. You know, True. Like some people still do, love opera, right? For example, right? Like yes, yeah, yes, or Broadway. Do I love orchestral music? Do I love film scores and great video game scores? Of course I do. Yes. I also love to be driving in my car and crank up "Back in Black." <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. So you think there's kind, a. All- Sorry, there's a wide variety of stuff then in all fields still. It's not like overwhelmingly sure. just coming from move like the money just coming from movies and video games. Yeah, For, there's there's great because there's, there's great lots because there's lots of Broadway. Lots of people do stuff which just I mean I know I have a place where I live where they they have musicians come every night different like a, like a tavern kind of thing. So like there cool. is lots of other things still right like even though music and video games are so big now <laughs> compared to they were right. 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Great answer. That's what we were curious. We were curious what you thought about that. So, all right. Thank you. All right. Next one. All right. What is your most recent song? I think you already answered this. You have done, which is the new one. You said this at the beginning. Um, and then, can why don't you just go into more that. details about your new song and uh, your book, or and then if you have a, a social media to follow too and that kind of thing, if you want people, you want to say that. Sure. So, um. The new score is The Settlers, Allies. And on February 20th, I'm going to release the um, music video for the main theme, which is called Return of the Settlers. It's a cool video because the guy that it features is Canadian fingerstyle guitarist Antoine Dufour. And so you'll watch him play this song. And he doesn't just do this. He's like hitting the side of his guitar and he's going up here on the frets and he's doing all these uh, crazy harmonics. Right? <laughs> so he's he's like all over the place, almost like a one man band, right? <laughs> just on his acoustic guitar. But also you'll see over in the corner of the video, Nicole Pinnell comes in playing the cello, right? And you can hear the cello part. And then over in the other corner, um, we've got Becca Minch who comes on playing the violin, right? And then you can hear the little violin part. And then the other corner, here comes the flute part. And then over here, you see the orchestra that we recorded. And then oh, um, cool. you see gameplay footage. All the while, Antoine is just playing his heart out in the middle of the video. But you've got all these other elements that sort of come in and out. I just think it's a really cool video. And it's going to premiere my YouTube channel. Uh, beginning at, I think it's 5 a.m. Pacific time on okay. Monday, February the 20th. All right. And again, you guys, you can go, the link will be down there to a YouTube channel. So you should check that out. That's so and, cool. And from that, thanks, Garrett. And I was just going to say, and from that video, look in the description, and there's also a link, the music page where you've got pictures from all the recording sessions. You can listen to little 30 second clips from every other song on the soundtrack. Oh, cool. Very cool. Very cool. I think when we're done here, Garrett, I'll send you the link to that so you can check it out. And I'll, and yeah, yeah. And if you want, I could even link things, you know, to whatever you want to put in the video, of course, after. Okay. Um, Yeah, definitely. I love the fact that it's like the bringing in part. So you start with one part and then you add another part, another part. I love music like that. Like whether it be, you know, Mozart, Beethoven doing it or like any of your scores where just slowly things come and like add in. Like I love that stuff. Um, I don't know if you know the composer who did uh, Destiny 2, but um, yeah. the the um there's one piece he did that was like a build up like cool that. Salvatore, so Salvatore, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, but he did a build up piece like that. So, anyway, I'm excited and I love your one. You have one of the Lord of the Rings that's a build up piece that I love too. So, 
I'm excited about your new score. So that'll be fun. We're, we'll have to check it out, all of us. All right. Um, and then, th that was a great answer. Do you have any social media besides the YouTube channel that you want people to follow? Like, Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Twitter. Um, so any of those, just look for Chance Thomas Composer. And, okay. Um, love to continue the dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I can link those for us later if you'd like me to in, in the video for people to find. Um, all right. So um, would you like to talk a little bit more about your book I put here? Sure. Yeah. 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 Go for uh, it. And the, it. The book is called Making It Huge in Video Games, Memoirs of Composer Chance Thomas. It's coming out in uh, this coming summer. And it's organized, mostly it's organized by video game title you know? okay like there's avatar there's lord of the rings actually there's two whole chapters on lord of the rings online and if i can just preview one little story oh, yeah go um, for it we'd be happy to hear it <laughs> craig alexander as i mentioned was the general manager of sierra online brought the very first tolkien mmo license to the video game industry and uh, of course, that game was canceled. Sierra was bought and sold. All that stuff happened. Uh, Craig went off his way. I went off my way. Uh, he had lived near Yosemite National Park, like I did when we both worked at Sierra. And so every year while I lived near Yosemite, I hosted this event called the Huge Sound Half Dome Conquest. Um, I would invite people from all over the country and we would go and we would summit half dome. So that okay. Take a minute, Garrett and all your friends and just Google half dome. Half dome. And look at the picture of this massive monolith in the 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 middle of Northern California. So I I've been Craig there. Decided to come yeah. One. yeah, it's Craig decided yeah. to come one you. So here Craig and I are we're at the top of Half Dome. I'm on my phone calling my wife. And Craig is on his phone being offered the job to come and be the general manager of Turbine Entertainment. Oh my god. Which gosh. was making Lord of the Rings online. In the middle of gorgeous so, Sierra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was literally on top of Half Dome that he got the job. And I'm standing there with him and we're talking about it. We're kind of celebrating together. And it's like, yeah, you know, Craig, if you need music, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you're like, you're better than your friend. Words, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so the whole book is filled with stories like that. It's very entertaining. It's inspiring. Um, it's informative. Um, and I've also woven in, you know, I think there's... 23 chapters of um, career related stuff. And then I've also sprinkled in 10 little personal journal chapters. You know, here's yeah. a little slice of my personal life, you know, growing up in Oklahoma, for example. Oh, that's so cool. Or, um, meet, yeah. Meeting my wife and what that was like and having kids and that stuff. So I that's think it's going to so, be a really biography and book. learning. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's super cool. Yeah, that is that's really exciting. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. And again, later on when it's out, the book is out. I will come back and link it to the video. So when once you're selling, well, you. you can let me know, and I'll come back and I'll preemptively link it if people watch this in the future because it'll be out, you know, okay. on the channel. And we've got right. And right now, there's actually a link you can go to which has I think a dozen short previews oh. that have already been written about the book, like. Um, on Sunday night, just this past Sunday, the Grammy Awards gave away the very first Grammy Award for a video game score. <gasps> that's that's huge. That's a huge right? thing. Right? But back in 1998, they started that process. <gasps> oh, Eventually yeah. led to last Sunday. And yes. so you can read about that. That's super too. cool. That's super cool. All right. I think I remember you telling me part of that story in our in in the uh i don't know if you want to if you want to wait for the book or if you want to give us a little sneak peek of that story but <laughs> i no, think i remember it. you can read that sneak peek online right now. oh all right awesome awesome well i'll link that for them in the description yeah that's really cool, cool. that's super cool that's neat that it came to fruition though after all your work 
you know Amazing. like that you get to see yeah. it right because like a lot of times like for example you know beethoven like he wasn't really very famous until he already passed right <laughs> So it's neat to see something you did and things you did already coming to fruition. That might have something to do with technology, right? Things can be spread faster, sure. right? Maybe that's speed, why. The speed of modern living. Yeah, yeah, exactly, which can end up being a good thing. So, um, wow, we did it. We got through all the topics. So um, I don't know if you <laughs> – that was pretty good. Um, I did add one last little thing here if you if you want to. Um, I said, can we hear a little bit about your life and how you got to the point of composing – and obviously, now you're just retired uh, through your movies and video games. I know we've already gone through some of that, but like maybe just a little like, you know, where you grew up, boo doo doo, like real fast. Because I know your book has more details. So, yeah, um, and, and this might be of most interest to people who are considering a career in music themselves. Mm -hmm. um, did have like you, Garrett? I had yeah. a good influence from my mother growing up. I was in a rock band in high school. I started writing music when I was 10. Did go to business school for two and a half years before transferring to music school and ended up with a degree, a college degree in music, which mm -hmm. I think has been really helpful. And I've done a ton of different things in the music world. I even entertained on cruise ships. Oh, that's <laughs> for cool. For two and a half years with my wife. That was a blast. That's pretty cool. Um, eventually got into writing music scores for video games, television shows, and some animated movies and independent films. It's been a great career. I've loved it. Um, my last thing I'd like to say about that is there are and there have been people like you, Garrett, who have appreciated, become fans of the music that I've written over the year. And I got to tell you, that means everything to me. Um, People who appreciate the blood, sweat, and tears that I pour into the music. Love you guys. I'm grateful. So grateful for your support and encouragement over the years. So well, I just I, want to say thank you. I, you are welcome because we, we really do enjoy it. I personally really i have loved your stuff. It's really fun to be able to say I got to know you as a friend. So that's really cool. And, um, yeah, this has just been a privilege and super fun today to have this interview. And uh, I just... Um, you had the, my door is always open if you ever want to come on again <laughs> in the future uh but you don't no obligation but uh if you ever want to or you have some new thing you want to show or share too so absolutely but uh yeah this has been super super fun i think we all had a blast um and uh i know i did <laughs> and uh and we really do appreciate your music chance we really do we, we're like it's really really cool and again i never assumed that that video game with that wonderful music that's really inspired me to start a music career right myself right you know Incredible, and man. and now i'm doing a channel that really that based highly on that game right with your music in it right so like and again i always say this 50 percent of a video game is music i always say this to my friends or my channel if 50 percent of a video game is music the gameplay has to be good but if the music is good too you got a great game it like if you don't have good music, even if the gameplay is good, most people are not gonna, yeah, and vice versa. The gameplay is not good. The music it might be able to carry it. Doesn't reach your emotion as much, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent. So um, let me just quickly look at my notes here. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to add, Chance? I think we're good. We're all right. We're good. Well, again, thank you. It was a privilege to have you on, uh, composer Chance Thomas, and. Uh, We'll see you guys all in the next episode, and I'll add a little ending on here after our finished recording here. So anyway, all right, guys, have a good one. Everyone, <laughs> see Bye. you guys. Baruch Kazad Kuzad, I menu. Well, how was that? That was just fantastic. I had such a blast. I hope you did as well. Again, thank you to composer Chance Thomas for coming on. It was a privilege and honor to have him on the channel for my very first interview for the channel here on Voice of the Rings. So that means a lot to me. And it was super, super fun. I hope you guys had a blast as well. I know we had a blast having fun conversations there. And don't forget, guys, please check out the links down there. Check out his uh, his site with his music. All right, Huge Sound Records down there. The link is down there. I'll have it in the comments and the description he'll have his new book coming out that i will link later on the video uh once it's out officially and he has some sneak peeks that i have linked down there and then also he has his new music soundtrack which is just fantastic and again this music you're hearing right now in the background you guys this is the music we were talking about though this is from lord of the rings online what we've been talking about during the interview and also um i will 
thank you so much to everyone for viewing and watching this and watching the whole video. I really greatly appreciate it. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And without forgetting, thank you to Scumly for being a royal guard. I appreciate the support as my Patreons. All my Patreons, I appreciate your guys' support. It makes the channel possible. And for all of you guys liking and subscribing. So again, have a great and wonderful day in Middle Earth. Check out the links below. And I will leave you with a wonderful and beautiful scene of the Lord of the Rings Online, Rivendell, with the music that we were talking about during the interview. Enjoy, my friends, and have a wonderful day in Middle-earth. Stay happy. Baruch Hazad, Kuzad, I menu. See ya.
Thank you.